song. Good morning, baby. Just for the Friday, let's go. There you go. Good morning, Miss Westmoreland. Good morning. Let's get it. Is this your life for me? Good morning, Jessica. Good morning. Hey. Hey. Let's go, man. Another Friday. That wasn't promised. I'll take it. Let's get it, man. Let's go. Because I'm ready just to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dioka, good morning. Let's go, man. Fun Friday. We made it through another week. Good morning, Miss Nelson. Thank you for joining the morning cup of coffee. Muchly appreciate it. Let's go. All right. Let's go, man. I pray everybody's doing well on this beautiful, fun Friday. Thank you guys for joining me. The morning cup of coffee. It's yours truly, Mr. J.R. Copeland himself. You know, back for another day. Just thank everybody for coming in, joining in. Y'all gotta forgive me, man. I think I'm about to be sick. My throat started hurting last night. And uh sweat. <laughs> Which that don't say too much because I do that. I do a lot of that. But uh yeah, just keep me in your prayers, man. We but we gonna tough it out this morning. We gonna tough it out this morning. Beautiful Friday, man. Um, how many of you give me a thumbs up in the chat if the first thing that you do when you wake up in the morning is thank God for waking you up in the name of Jesus for real? <clears throat> give me a thumbs up in the chat if the, if the first thing that you do in the morning is wake up and say thank you for waking me up. Put it in the chat, I'll take that. You can let it rip as well. I'll take that. <clears throat> you can show love with it, but I want to see. Okay, yeah, I want to know the person. Yeah, okay, Jessica. Yeah, thank you for waking me up this morning. Who else does that? You know, thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you for waking. The reason why I bring it up is because I forgot to do it this morning. And I usually do. I woke up, I was laying there, I kind of slept past my, slept past the alarm. Lord, let me sleep past the alarm. And I struggle. For those of you who don't know, I struggle going to sleep. So whenever I do sleep, it's like, let's get it. You know, <laughs> let's get it. And um, I laid there and I was like, oh, she's the time to get up. And I'm like, oh. Kind of laid there for a second. And I proceeded to get up. I, I knew the time was short. Okay. I knew the time was short. So I just got up. Boop, and proceeded to start doing things that I, you know, that I needed to get done to, to, to get this morning started. And I didn't thank God for waking me up this morning. And we fail to realize that that's like a simple thing, but it's also, um, it's like in our minds, it's remedial. It's so small, but actually it's a huge deal. It's a big deal, man. It's a big deal that you thank God. Good morning, mister. That you thank God when you wake up in the morning, man. That's a part of your first fruit. If you wake up, the thing about it, and it takes away from a, a, a complaintive uh, a mindset and, and a negative mindset because the first thing that you do is you give glory and thanks and you're grateful for the fact that you woke up this morning. It's the most important, you're right, baby. It's the most important thing that you can do first thing in the morning. It's the most important thing that you can do first thing in the morning is to show gratitude unto God. Because there's somebody who didn't wake up. Yeah, big facts. Big facts. In Psalms, David says, I will rise early and praise you in the morning. 
How many of us rise early and praise him in the morning? I mean, you got to realize, like, you know, for, for, for a large majority of the world, if you wake up at 530, some, some people wake up at 445. If you wake up anywhere between 530 and 6 o'clock, that's early for the, for the average American. Now, other people who are doing different things in their lives, that's, that may be different. Hey, welcome. Thank you for joining the Morning Cup. You know, uh, but, on, but on, and when I, <laughs> at night when I go to the bathroom, straight up, straight up. Lawyer tell you, I walk around praying, thinking, praying all day, pretty much. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a continual thing, you know, but to show that gratitude first thing in the morning. So it's relatively early, about 5, 30, 6 o'clock in the morning, the average, you know, if you're working and things of that nature. You just get up five minutes early. Right. If you used to get up five minutes earlier just to give that that five minutes of reverence. Sometimes I'll wake up and I'll be up and I'll lay there and give mine in the bed before I even get going. I won't move. I get up like, oh, thank you for this day, Lord. You know, kind of to myself out loud. Just appreciate him for waking me up today, to giving me the strength, the wherewithal, the mindset, the faculties to navigate through my day. Because we have to, we come, we have to realize this, that without him, it's impossible. It's impossible. Or it's not flourishing. <laughs> And yeah, I didn't know that, but I can, I mean, you can tell because the behavior change. Anytime you add God to something, it will change. It won't be the way it was when it entered. Whenever it meets God, it'll change. That's that's repetitive throughout the Bible. Every time something came in contact with 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 God or Jesus, when it left, it was different. You cannot have a true encounter with Him and walk away the same person that you were. You may regress a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Because we get we get lazy and lackadaisical and, and complacent in the lives that we live and in, in, in all routines of our lives. A lot of us get that way. We get lazy, lackadaisical, complacent, and, and, and then the next thing you know, we're drifting backwards. Even if you change for, yeah, could we get comfortable? You're right. Absolutely. Amen to that. And it's, it's something that's like a continual work. It's a continual work. And, and that waking up first thing in the morning, that, sets, that pivots you for the whole day, man. That sets you up for, for the whole day. God, thank you. I'm telling you something. Okay. How many of you think about gratitude? Like, it's nothing like gratitude, man. There's nothing like it. And God's no different. He wants, he wants to feel thanks. You know? It says, it says, the word of God says that he inhabits the praises of his people. So no matter what your condition is or no matter what your situation is, if you continue to pray, if you go to, if you get to praising God, he'll show up in the midst of that thing. It's just, that's just the fact. It's just how it works. Good morning, Valerie. It's just how it works. If you start to praise no matter what situation you're in, hell, jail, fire, divorce, drugs, liquor, alcohol, weed, pornography, lying, obesity, What's that called? Uh, when you eat too much. Gluttony. No matter what you in the midst of, if you're trying to get God to show up in it, to change that situation, can't pay bills, kids act crazy, anything, anything that you find that you find yourself in a situation where you need God to show up in, throughout the history of time, it's been, it's been proven. And, it's, and the word backs this up. If you start to praise, he's going to show up. If you start to give thanks, no matter what situation, circumstance that you're in, he's going to show up. He inhabits the praise of his, of his people. And you can't change that. You can't take that away. You can't, you can't make that not the truth. There's no way to do that. You can let that rip. Some people are trying to, no, you ain't going to, no. They'll try to change the word. You can't change the word of God. If, if, if the word of God says um, God inhabits the praise of his people, that's just what it is. That's just as true as, as H2O. Period. That's how real that is. H2O. God inhabits the praise of his people. Good morning, Amanda. How you doing? 
that's more real than the ground that we're standing on at this very moment. God inhabits the praises of his people. You can't change that. Scientific. It's history. It's history. Were the Romans over there in Rome? Did they conquer half of the world? Absolutely. Does God inhabit the praises of his people? Absolutely. Absolutely. Ain't no changing it. It's unbendable. It's unbreakable. You can't go over it. You can't go under it. You can't get around it. There's nothing that you can do to disvalue the fact that God inhabits the praise of his people. And if you find yourself in a situation, get to praising them. Get to being thankful. But what am I be thankful for? Are you standing up while you're doing it? I can't pay these bills. Are you in the house while you're making, while you, while you talk? What are you trying to pay these bills? Thank God for whatever it is that you lack in the money to pay for. If you're struggling to get gas, thank God for the car. <laughs> if you're struggling to make rent, thank God, praise God for the house. Just praise him for the house. God, I don't know how I'm going to pay this rent, but you know what? I thank you for this house because there's somebody standing on the corner in Dallas right now on Harry Hines with a sign and a tent under a bridge. You cannot, I will, you can never convince me and no one should never be able to convince you. The word of God is simple and it's plain and it's true and it's a rock that you can stand on. And it says this, that God inhabits the praises of his people. So the first thing that you're supposed to do when you get up in the morning is give God thanks and praise. You can't convince me of different. And the reason why I'm telling y'all about that this morning is because I, I was late getting up and I got up and I got to moving before I did so. And that's how fast it'll happen. You get so caught up and consumed with the things that are going on around you. Oh, I got to do the morning coffee. Oh, I got to make sure Lori gets outside. Oh, I got to. Oh, did she make coffee? I need to make coffee. Let me take my dog out. Oh, I didn't put no clothes out. I forgot to go do this. Let me turn off the, the, uh, the, the, the porch light. All this. Just whatever. Oh, got to make sure I check them emails because, you know, I got to be out of here by 715. And you'll get going before you thank God for the fact that you can get going. Heck you mean. Quick small things. And he will always provide, always has. But we have to be a thankful people. You want God in your life constantly? Constantly walk around with a spirit of praise. Somebody find that scripture for me. I should have wrote it down, but I didn't know exactly if I was going to go there. But uh, God inhabits the praises of his people, man. You cannot beat it. Can't nobody take it away from you. And it's life altering. It's situation changing. It's mind blowing, mind altering, mind shifting, body healing, bill paying, kid rescuing, huh? <laughs> Husband saving, wife saving, business saving. This is all the things that God will do. It, it does all that, the Word of God. You find yourself, you can't put that $5 worth of gas in your car and have it. Thank God for the car. Because God inhabits the praise of his people. And he'll show up and he'll show out. Period. Period. It ain't no other way around it. And no, I'm not going to let nobody convince me that, that, uh, that, that, that it's not true. And I, and I swear to God, you should not let nobody convince you that it's not. Because that's the full-blown truth. And it can't be bent and it can't be broken. I found myself in a situation one time when I was on the inside and I started just chanting Psalms 23. Thanking God for a praying mother. Thanking God that these that that, that although the weapons were formed, they will not overcome me. Weapons may form, but they no weapon formed to get they will not prosper. Thanking God for that. And I promise you that situation changed. Came out of that thing, not even smell it, smell it like smoke. Yeah.
And we once we once we wrap our minds around that, once we wrap our, our minds around that, we'll start to live a more thankful, God praising life. And the more you praise God, the more the more God is there with you. And the more God is there with you, the more things change in your life, the more peace that you have, the more understanding that you have, the more blessings that you have, the more understanding that you have, the more guidance that you have, the more discretion that you have, the more discernment that you have. All of these things change the quality of life. So what are you saying, Jay? Well, ultimately, you can change the quality of life with your praise. You can change the quality. Let that rip. You can change the quality of your life with your praise, with your praise, with your with your thankfulness, with your thankfulness, man. A life of a life of gratitude, man. A life of gratitude. The other day, I had a situation in my job. And I disagreed with the lady, with the boss. And she felt that I was being disrespectful. For one, she failed to realize she's talked to one of the most grateful people in the world. I'm grateful for the opportunity to, to even be working here. And 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 I just and just because I disagreed with you don't doesn't mean that 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 I was being disrespectful. Because for one, I would never disrespect her ever. I respect her as a person, I respect her as a child of God, I respect her as my boss. Now that don't mean I have to constantly agree with you. Because we're both individuals, we're both human, we can all make mistakes. I end up being 100% wrong, text her and apologized, and I say all that because I, walk, I do my very best to walk around in, in the posture of gratefulness for everything, man. Because you got to realize that when you've been to the very, very bottom, you understand that cold water is a blessing because there's hot water. You understand that a Pepsi is a blessing because there's water. You understand that a hat is a blessing because there's a situation where you can't wear hats. You understand that walking to the refrigerator is a blessing because there's a situation where you're not walking to a refrigerator. You understand that getting in the car and having to go pay $1,700 for gas is still a blessing because there's some people who don't have a car. That's just a posture of gratitude. Just a posture of gratitude. If you walk by and shake my hand, I'm grateful for it. Because there's somebody else who's gonna swing by and flip you the bone. <laughs> it's just it's a it's a it's a, it's, a, it's a perception thing, and we have to walk around with an attitude of gratitude. Period. First thing in the morning, man, your first fruit should be praise and things. When you wake up, as soon as your before your feet hit the ground, or as soon as your feet hit the ground, don't do like I did this morning. Don't get so caught up in your life and and trying to get stuff done at the first that you pop up and get to it without. Thanking God for the, for, the, for the wherewithal, for the ability, for the being able to get to it, for the it, whatever it is that you get into before you thank God for that. Before you thank God for kissing you on your forehead and saying, wake up, baby, let's go. We're going to go. We got another day. And then whenever he wakes you up, this is the first thing that he tells you. And you don't, you, you don't hear it because you ain't talking to him. My mercy is brand new for you today. Wake up, let's go. Y'all welcome Latasha to the morning cup of coffee. Y'all, y'all welcome Shantae to the morning cup of coffee. Welcome to the morning cup of coffee. We do this Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Thank you guys for tapping in. Yeah, his mercy's brand new for you every day. So don't forget to give him those first fruit when you wake up. God, thank you. I thank God I gotta fold that laundry today. <laughs> You, that's how you got to look at it. Even the stuff that you know you don't want to do. <laughs> you know, I thank God I got to cut brush. See, today is my day where I got to do the little bitty stuff around the house, right? I got to I gotta fold the rest of the laundry that we didn't fold last night. I got to comb this dog because I ain't got nothing going today. So it's my job. Hey, partnership, right? And <laughs> it is clean. But in, in my mind, I hate folding. First of all, when you don't, you try to fold something and somebody constantly telling you that you're not folding it right, that takes the joy out of it. For one, there's no joy in it at all. But the posture that I'm going to take is, I thank God I got to fold that laundry today. And I'm going to fold it. I'm going to get it done, sweetheart. Guaranteed. I'm going to do it with a joyful heart, too. <laughs> 
<laughs> I ain't trying to hear all that. And she talking about I showed you the correct way. Anyway, hey, y'all. Hey, check this out. Be grateful for the day. When you wake up in the morning, thank God for his mercy. It's brand new every day. Thank God that he kissed you on your forehead and caused your eyes to open. Be thankful in all things that you do. If you find yourself in a situation, praise your way through it because he will show up in the midst of your praise. That's a guarantee. Those are not my words. Those are his. And he is not a man that could lie. Trust that with your whole heart. Don't be wavered. Do something good for someone on today. Have fun on this fun Friday. I love you. And it's easy. God first.